Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So in this video, I have invited Krishna. Hello Krishna, thank you, thank you for accepting my invitation. And in this video, we will talk everything about Flipkart. So hello Krishna, could you please give me a quick introduction so that our viewer will get to know about you? Hey Amrita, I'm Flip, uh, I'm Krishna. I've been working in Flipkart for the past two years. Prior to that, I've worked with Dell for almost two years. So I am a 2018 graduate from a non like, non IIT non IIT institute. Uh, I got directly placed from college to Dell and post that I switched to Flipkart. So I have close to four years of experience in backend development, mostly, yeah. Uh, that's and really like, great. Hobbies, yeah, then more, like some of my hobbies are reading, technical writing, reading, and we are playing some games and all, yeah. Yeah, so that's really great. So as you are from Flipkart, so uh, Flipkart is a really great company and I also wanted to join Flipkart when I was fresher. So the one question I want to ask, could you please explain how you got interview opportunity from Flipkart? Sure. So the, my interview opportunity was plain dumb luck. So when I was looking for uh, job opportunities back in 2019, I started in August. So I was not getting any interviews. I was applying to different companies because of the background, let's say tier three background. I just had one year of work experience, so not, I was not getting any interviews. So I interviewed with Amazon in August and I guess October of that year, 2019. And I interviewed with AMD, probably in November. And by, by accidental dumb luck, I got a message from a recruiter in November, I guess November or December of 2019, that, hey, there is a recruitment drive going on and do you like would like to join? There is an interview uh, scheduled next week. So I, basically, I just had time of five, six days to prepare for that. So that's how I got the job interview. So the key, key aspect is my LinkedIn was very updated and I was already looking for jobs. So that made it easy because my profile was liking posts. I was uh, active on the LinkedIn feed. So that's how the opportunity came. Yeah, that's really great. Uh, so before asking next question, I want to introduce this channel. So this channel is brought to you by Newton School. Newton School is a very good platform where you can learn software engineering. And if you want to join the Newton School ka March batch, you can click on the link in the description and you can join the Newton School ka March batch. And you can also get the link in the description of the Newton School ka site ka link bhi aapko description mein mil jayega, so please check out that. So the first, uh, like the next question I want to ask, could you please explain and share your interview experience as Flipkart used to conduct totally different kind of interview, what I heard. So basically, could you please explain each and every round of your interview? Sure. Uh, so basically what Flipkart does different is there's a machine coding round. So in order to understand machine coding, let's let me explain what is a low level design term. So when generally uh, you are building some product, you do its high level design, like what are the uh, tooling that you will be requiring, what are the things that you'll be using, how the components will look like at high level, and there is a low level design. So there are various components to low level design. At the center of the low, low level design, there is entity modeling, basically how do you structure your classes and how they interact with each other, and what is the logic, your, uh, what, how they algorithmically interact and achieve the functionality. So that is the main pivot. You can also call it as object oriented design. So that is the first thing. Then secondly, in microservices world, there is maybe URI structuring. Let's say, how do you structure your APIs? How do you structure your URIs? That is the second aspect. Third aspect of a low level design mode would be your entity or schema design or how do you design your database? How the tables would look like? Because your actual view of the class and database might differ. That is the third aspect. And fourth aspect would be anything other than the database. Maybe you are using some cache. We're using some message queues and all. So th that that things like how are you going to lay those down? How will they function and all? It's called a low level design. So uh, machine coding is basically a very small snippet of uh, the uh, the low level design where you specifically focus on the object oriented design design and how to uh, how the classes will interact with each other to achieve some functionality. So what it does is it checks the candidate in like the real world scenario. Let's say let's take an example of a music player, right? So if, if in a music player, there is a support for a playlist, there is a support for a recommendation engine, right? So how do you design all those classes and how will they behave? So in, in machine coding, you design those classes, you write all those interactions, you also, and also you write a demoable sort of, you know, demo code. So that invokes those classes and does the, all the functionalities that is required in the sort of the problem statement. So with, with the, generally the rule is with SD1 or the junior levels, the problem is very specific and the problem is quite huge. It might cover one, 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 and a half, one and a half pages. So you're supposed to do that in maybe one hour, one and a half hour, or it may be spanned to two hours as well. So that, that the problem statement is quite huge and the time is quite limited. 
So what the interviewers are looking for is how demoable and how clean your code is. First aspect. Second aspect is like how extensible and how forward looking the design is. Third aspect is like you're not, not taking any shortcuts. I told you like you have to write some sort of demoable uh, sort of driver code. So let's say there are classes. In those classes, you will be creating some playlists, adding some songs and all. So you have to write a demo code for those, those, those things. So there's a standard to that as well. So generally in machine coding designs, you don't interact with the database. So I, as I told earlier, there are multiple parts to LLD. There is a class design and or slash entity design. Or secondly, there is database layer design. And thirdly, there is API URI level design. So if we just focus on the class entity design, how the class interact with each other and how they achieve that functionality. And that code should be clean. That clean code should be demoable. That is the first prerequisite. Then comes the extensibility part. Then comes maybe how you have stuck. Let's say there, there, there are aspects in object oriented design where you might keep one property in one class, one in other class. How, why did you take those decisions? All those things. So that sort of covers machine coding. And also machine coding statement is quite huge. So the first and foremost requirement is you should complete the problem statement. There's a problem statement and there's some bonus aspects through the problem statement as well. So you stick to the main problem statement. You complete the problem statement with demoable code with sort of good variable names function segregation, uh, appropriate things in the appropriate classes and our like appropriate way of invocation and all. So that's how machine coding round goes. And for machine coding, uh, the it sort of demos your how you will be writing the code in production or in the real world. So it's a really good uh, measure of checking the, how the candidate will perform in day-to-day -day activities. Yeah, that's about machine coding. It's quite huge. Malab, you can read more about such examples online if you go through some examples it will be more clear once you try try them out yourself and with the increasing level of the designation let's say sd2 if the problem statements are huge or uh, generally for the senior levels like sd2 and sd3 you might get a questions which are very very shorthand like let's say design a in memory uh, file system or design a messaging system so those one liners two liners are there for the senior levels or for the senior folks where you have to come up with the design and all for those single liners in the machine code. Yep. So that's the first round. Uh, and uh, coming to the second round is DSA. So DSA round is generally one hour, one hour, one hour, 15 minutes, where it can range from 45 minutes to one hour, 15 minutes, where you're given two lead code type questions. And the difficulty generally tends to be medium and it can, it can go to hard as well, depends on your luck and depends on your recruiter. So you get those two questions where you have to explain like what will be your approach, maybe what the brute force approach or the optimized approach. And if the interviewer is happy with the approach, you just go ahead and uh, write the actual code. And then once you have written the actual code, you just tell you, okay, this is my code. You cover all the edge cases, all the edge scenarios, and you try to explain your code. So that is the second round. The second round is quite like the second round is quite straightforward and similar to other companies. So no sort of specialized thing there then third round would be uh, your ma manager or sort of behavioral round where you are given sort of star like scenarios scenarios basically you you just tell your work experience uh, so star is some something like what was the situation what was the task what was the action what was the result so th th that's how you can better answer the those behavioral questions and also the key aspect of those interviews is the behavioral interviews. You should bring in some X factor. Basically, if you have one, feel free to, uh, you should, you should be able to put that forward. Let's say my, let's say I like technical writing. I like technical writing, technical blogs and all. I should be open to for like pitch that, those things. So generally managers uh, or the hiring managers look for those kind of things other than your core competencies, core competencies, of course. So that is about the manager round. And also if you have some sort of side projects that you're working on, the side project means personal projects, not something like you're doing some course, there's some project attached to that course. That is not a personal project. Personal project is something that you're, you're developing from scratch. If that is there also, you can pitch that in. So that is uh, almost the main aspect of the manager or hiring manager. So these are the three go rounds which decide the outcome of the interview. Yeah. And for uh, senior folks, and if there is a case of doubt, there can be further rounds as well, which can be a mix of sort of behavioral plus DSS. Generally, there are three rounds. Yeah, that's the whole interview process in like sort of expanded detail. Yeah. Oh, yes. So I think you've explained each and every round in very detailed manner. So our viewer will get lots of benefit from this. 
and especially uh, what i observed flipkart used to like uh, you know wants a, per a perfect person a mix of everything development your uh, design knowledge your dsa knowledge so if you are if you want to try and if you want to try for flipkart then try to focus each and every concept and each and every aspect like development system designing and uh, like everything i can say yeah uh, yeah, so uh, the, the, the main part here is generally system design or this sort of, I would say machine coding is a sub part of a LLD. So which, which actually goes into a nitty small portion of the LLD and tries to implement it. So they actually, these kind of things are generally not asked in SD1 roles, but Flipkart is that in senior senior round, senior thing, uh, sort of roles like SD2s and all, having HLD rounds, having LLD rounds is very common. Yeah. Uh, so uh, like, uh, I'm, uh, next question I want to ask, like, could you please express what is the difference between HD1 level and HD2 level of Flipkart? Sure. So SD1 level, generally you have a plain sort of uh, like the core like focus is on the implementation part. You, you get some design work gradually. It's not like you just come in and uh, you might get some design work as well. But the, the difference is like as the SD2 sort of manages or maintains an entire component. Generally, it's, it's a general thing. It's, it might not be same for every team, but how we observe in my team is basically you have a component. SD2 is sort of responsible for that component and a couple of SD1s are working together with them for the implementation part as well. So as, as SD1 matures gradually, it starts getting design work as well, the low level design parts and uh, maybe some high level design work. So as you progresses further, let's say you, you came in as SD1, you implemented something, uh, some couple of projects, couple of releases, then you start gradually start getting triple sort of design work. So once you start doing good design work, uh, you get for, for maybe multiple releases, you get promoted to SD2 and all promotions and SD1 and SD2 is mostly forward looking. Let's say uh, you get promoted only when you are functioning at that level. So let's say uh, if someone is working as a SD1, but he's working on par with SD2, let's say he's already capable of doing SD2 work, then and only uh, you tend to get promoted because no one wants you to struggle in that role, next role, right? So that's the general idea about SD1, SD2. And it's not sort of a fuzzy line between the roles. I'm like SD2 might be also working mostly on the implementation if there's not design work, much design work at all. It all depends on the kind of work the team has. Yeah, and generally, uh, uh, the years of experience for SD twos when you are applying from external, uh, like a, as a uh, external candidate, is three plus years in the jo job uh, sort of uh, descriptions and all. But it's also possible to get the same with two and a half years of experience, two years of experience. Depends on your caliber. And all. Yeah, you might have. So basically, once you give an interview for SD one, and if you feel if you feel you get a let's say higher option, they they are hiring you. You can say that I'm capable. I can do SD two. They might. You, you might go for multiple extra rounds and you can get a SD2 as well. But that generally doesn't happen because if the work experience is sort of uh, required per se. Yes. Uh, so this is really great. So like, uh every uh, like every level of engineering like hd1 or hd2 have some uh, their own qualities so if you want to uh, get and achieve this level then you have to fulfill that yeah yeah, definitely. yeah so the last yeah. question i want to ask and it's a really important question so as lots of our viewers are students professor and some of our also working professionals so what are some advice you want to give them so please uh, answer this question yeah, sure, sure, definitely. So basically, uh, having a job in hand and being, uh, being in the working, being, being in the workforce is a great thing. Basically, I've seen people from tier three colleges being disappointed. I'm in this X Y Z company; they're not paying me this much. It, it's it's not a big deal. Basically, what you can do, you can work really hard. So it, it's it's not. So even 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 in that job role that you are currently in, there will be things to learn at least for six months or at least for twelve months. So you can keep on learning those things. Doing start doing really good there. Don't skimp on those. And then you can parallelly start working on your DSA and you can parallelly start working on your design a bit, not extremely much focused on design, maybe 80, 20, 80% 80 on the DSA, 20% on the design. You can start working parallelly after six months, not like you directly went into the company and you're like, okay, I, I am from tier three. This is not for me. I want to switch and all that directly won't happen. Try to absorb as much as you can from your current job. Role. That should be your outlook always. Even if you're feeling, okay, I want to switch. You try to give you hundred percent to the current job. Role. And parallel, you can prepare for the, the other organizations or other switch, whatever you like to 
do. So, so that's the core aspect, doing good at your current work. Secondly, uh, the design thing, for design things, you have to have some sort of practical experience. Design doesn't come by reading. So no matter how much amount of, you know, the designing books I read or whatever you did, the actual practical implications are necessary for the doing good in the interviews. So if you have, if you are getting some design work in your current job role, that is a very good thing. If that is not a try to design some stuff, try to do some sort of LLDs, HLDs. So the best thing you can do here is do pair programming, find sort of a friend or, or a colleague that you, you come up with, let's say, let's say for, for a month, you came up with some sort of pet project of yours. Let's say I will design some sort of with the same example we can take. Let's say music player is the very standard thing people do in college. The same thing you try to do with maximal sort of effort with good design and everything. So you do that and you try to, and the same thing your friend does. So you both sit down and uh, try to evaluate yourself. So that sort of pair programming helps in the design aspect. And also reading, reading and theory always helps. So having some sort of theoretical knowledge and going through the books, going through the videos of the good creators is always beneficial in the design aspect. And for DSA, the, the content has exploded in the last four or five years. So when I just came out of college, the content was not there, much content on DSA. So now there are a lot of good YouTubers. There are not a lot of good sort of websites where you can go and practice DSA and all. So I, I personally prefer Leetcode. Uh, the free version is also fine. So you can go there and you can like consistently do a couple of questions or two, three questions per day. Just be consistent. Not like, okay, I'm a weekend warrior. I will just do 10, 10 questions on Saturday and Sunday. Then no five days I will not want to do anything. That generally doesn't help. So what you do is you just pick a couple of questions per day as per your availability and then you go ahead with it. So that's the general piece of advice, yeah. These three points. So basically, first point was doing good in your job role, trying to absorb whatever you can. Secondly, for design, trying to do some sort of practical projects if you don't have that in your current job role. Third is DSA, be consistent, do sort of one hour of lead code every day. That would be fine. And also the fourth aspect. So getting the interviews is also a hard part uh, for a tier three or someone who is just trying to transition to different job role. So for those having good connections on LinkedIn, trying to ask people for reference in a sort of a cordial manner, like, okay, this is my resume. This is my structured resume. There are no typos. There are no problems in that. Forward that resume, ping the job ID and try to sort of write a one paragraph, like why I'm fit for this job role. No one will hesitate to refer, like refer you if you're the if your resume is right and if your approach is right. So that is one good thing uh, about LinkedIn, getting referrals. And uh, secondly, what you can do is also keep your LinkedIn up to date. So you do, I, nowadays, a lot of hiring is going on. Recruiters themselves will reach out to you if your profile have, covers the basic criteria. So that is the fourth point, I would say. Yes, so these are really a great and a very important suggestion that you have shared, like especially the LinkedIn one, like uh, nowadays, uh, like in fact, in every month, I used to get some offer from different companies. So if you are having a good LinkedIn profile, then uh, like hiring manager and someone like uh, HR used to uh, in search of uh, this kind of profile. So try to maintain your LinkedIn profile. And like each and every suggestion you have given, that is really important for Fraser. So please, please, uh, try to follow this and uh, this is the end of the video so before ending this video I want to say that I will put a uh, uh, LinkedIn ID of uh, Krishna in the description so you can also check out and you, in, in future if you want some suggestion or if you uh, want some uh, something you like you can just, uh, directly contact Krishna also yeah so with this note really I really want really to really if you feel like any sort of uh, uh, help, if you need any sort of help, sort of uh, regarding the preparation, how to prepare, and any sort of questions, you just feel free to reach out. I usually respond in a day or two. I don't actively check LinkedIn, but yeah, I do respond. Yeah. So yeah, so that's all about this video. So before ending this video, I want to say that uh, please, please check out the Newton School channel and uh, Newton School site. So my description my link dal chuki hu and jo bhi new batch aayegi. Jaise abhi to March batch chal rahi hai, jab April batch aayegi to description apne aap April batch ke link se up to date ho jata hai. To aap April batch ko bhi check out kar sakte ho. Aapko description mein first link wohi milegi. So please check out that and please join our Telegram group. So please like this video and subscribe this channel so bye bye thank you thank you krishna for accepting my invitation okay no problem. bye it is a pleasure